Hello, Charles here again for MGN TV, and today I want to talk about Hot Wheels Unleashed. Uh, this is a game I've got very mixed feelings on. I, I was I was quite excited when this was announced. It seemed like a really out there announcement that was very questionable. It was like, why the hell Hot Wheels? Why now? But then when we saw the gameplay, it did actually look quite promising. And gameplay is actually quite good. The devs have put a legitimate effort in here. And there are some big positives about this game we're going to get onto, but I feel like they've been done over by the, the, the corporation they work for and just overall corporate greed, which just drags this game down. But before I get to that, um, first off, the visuals. The game does look visually very good. UE4 Vanilla look, but it works quite well with the game. Graphics are solid, it is actually quite beautiful to look at. And there's little details everywhere, and the cars actually look, from what I can tell, they're pretty much one-to-one -one the models, which is quite impressive. The, the detail is there. The, the amount of detail in each individual car is quite insane, actually, and you can tell there's a lot of love that's been put into this game. And making sure that it just replicates Hot Wheels as much as it possibly can. We're going to get onto the gameplay. So it goes without saying this is an arcade racer. From the start, it's not going for super realism or anything like that. However, every arcade racer does feel quite different. This game has a lot of weight to it. And if you're a fan of games with very tight drifts, this game is absolutely for you. Drifting takes some learning. It really does, especially with every individual vehicle handling a bit differently. Uh, drifting feels quite good. It's very tight. It feels really good, the general driving, the weight to everything, the drifting, everything feels pretty damn good in this game, it really does feel really good. The courses are well designed, they're all very distinct track wise. One thing I'm not sure if I'm completely sold on is there are checkpoints in each course, so um, there's no cheesing. If you see like an area where you've got to shoot over a ramp and then you go down and spiral to a lower part of the course, you can't just drive off the ramp and land on the lower part of the course, it respawns you back. So um, there's no cheesing at all. Which is fine, but I, I don't know, there's, with how challenging this game is, especially on medium difficulty, it's if you don't play things perfectly, you're not going to come first. And there's no real way, if you're at a disadvantage from one little slip up, you can just be at a disadvantage for the rest of the entire match. So, um, very difficult. Not sure if the lack of cheesing is a good thing or a bad thing overall. The courses are great, there's a lot of variety. I mean, it's different track pieces, so some track pieces slow you down, some give you a boost, some are just normal. And then there's also environmental variables. So there'll be, there's a course with a spider, for example, that shoots webs at you as you go by. And if you get caught in the web, naturally that stops you for a bit. So there's, there's loads of really cool things like that. The courses are actually fantastic, really fun, really unique, well designed, can't fool them. The cars are all quite unique. They all have their own stats. They have their own nitro systems. Well, I say their own nitro systems, there's effectively two. One's a set of circles, which is like a nitro bars you can build up and then you can burn off one bar, but you have to burn the whole bar. And some cars only have one of those, some have three, four, five, it depends on the car to how many of those they have. The other option is a big, long, rechargeable bar. This is a bit different to the points. So you've got the point ones and you've got the bar, and they both build up through drift and just general driving, but um, the bar, I think, is a better system because you can burn off as much or as little of it as you want which in this game has much more of a benefit than just the, the points that you can burn off and you have to burn the whole thing off in the one go. The Nitro Bar series is built up by racing and drifting and there are certain tracks that help build up the Nitro Bar as well. Nitro itself is quite good, well thought of. Um, cars like the DeLorean and whatnot have their own Nitro sound. There's actually quite a lot of work that's gone into the game and the gameplay in terms of making each car feel distinct and sound distinct. It's a single player mode with quite a lot of content, a lot of things to unlock. Pretty challenging, very fun. Then there's the online multiplayer and there's a track builder. The track builder is fantastic. There's um, a lot of stuff you can do here. You can pretty much build anything once you've unlocked them. And um, really great. There's also a basement thing where you can customize your own little play den, which it's a nice feature, but I don't think many people are going to use. But the track builder is a really good style to show. Online multiplayer, however, doesn't have cross-platform play, which is incredibly disappointing. And there seems to be no server, so it's all peer-to-peer -peer based, which 
again comes with its own set of issues. The, the, the main gripe I have is, as I said before, each car has its unique stats, and there's there's a big problem with this game, as I alluded to, microtransactions. The game's incredibly microtransaction heavy. There's a £70 edition, which comes with two passes and some other unlocks and gives you early access to the game. But that doesn't even give you anywhere near all the content. There's separate season passes with vehicles that you can unlock that you've got to pay for separate from the DLC season passes. There's cars that can only be locked with in-game currency. Now, yes, you earn currency in-game, but again, feels like they're just gonna stealth drop after reviews to stealth drop in, be able to buy the currency and gimp all the rewards you get in-game just to try and squeeze as much money out of you as possible. There's loot boxes as well. So on top of limited edition cars that you can only buy for a limited amount of time, there's also loot boxes, season passes or battle passes, plus DLC passes. Given the game's £40 retail in Steam in the UK to have without any passes, no extra content whatsoever, this amount of content just seems incredibly egregious and also creates a big problem for the balancing. That's the second issue with the microtransactions. Each car has its own stats. So if you go into a multiplayer match and everyone's got a much better car, whether that's from loot boxes, buying them out, or season passes, they're going to have an advantage. And given there's no items in this game and there's nowhere choosing courses, it's going to be very difficult for you to win a match if you haven't got a really good car. Which, again, yeah, you can earn in game and you might get a good enough car from that. But there is definitely an advantage to anyone who invests in the game more than the initial price which that's the big red flag for me it feels like the developers have been really passionate about this they made a really great game but corporate has just demanded that it's just filled to the brim with mitra transactions to an extent that's just completely indefensible and it's going to create long-term balance issues really really disappointing and I, I feel for the devs here because I, I can tell from the amount of love put into this game this isn't a decision consciously made by them Samwise, not much to say, serviceable, not a fan of electronic music, muted that instantly, it, it just does its job. Performance wise, very very good, um, I think where this game's on the Switch all the way up to PC and next gen, they've really done a good effort on optimization throughout. On an 8700K with a 38 EOC I'm getting 140 FPS locked at 1440p with a lot of GPU on the table. If I up the resolution scale to 150%, which I think's around 4K, I think it's just shy of 4K, I can get a locked 140 on some tracks still, and another track's 113 to 130 FPS, so that's a significantly high frame rate for around 4K, which is quite impressive. So th this game should run on a variety of rigs without any problems. But ultimately, this is a good game. But I can only really give it a 7 out of 10 because while it's a fundamentally solid game with a good base to build on here and the track build is fantastic, etc. The microtransactions bring it down. The lack of banning that that's going to bring into multiplayer just brings it down. The courses are great. The cars look great. The game looks great. There's a lot of love put into it, but these microtransactions and the lack of crossplay is just going to harm this game in the long run. And at the £40 price, I just don't see it as justifiable. Alright, you can get it off key sites for £18. And it's probably just about worth that if you're going to play with friends that all have the level playing field. Otherwise, I would have to say give this one a miss. So again, 7 out of 10, great fundamental game. But the, the mitral transactions here, just they, they just absolutely bring the game down. They're completely indefensible.